Hey guys, I've decided to make this video because uh, <laughs> I've had a really interesting three couple months and uh, I've decided to um, share the uh, instruments of change with you. Because I know there are a lot of people right out there right now who are having very difficult lives. They're doing the wrong things, making the wrong choices. They're with the wrong people. They're just lost, looking for their way home. Spiritually, obviously. <laughs> well, I have basically lost a marriage. I've uh, basically lost the place that I would consider home, my second home. And so I think I'm pretty qualified to um, say that I have gone through a lot of loss to learn these important lessons. And this video is just going to really be based off the basic stuff because, you know, it's just better to not get too complicated the first time around. So what are the instruments of change? What are good habits? What are the things to do to make sure that you are the best you can be and that you look at situations critically and you don't jump to conclusions and you don't get overly stressed or controlling or you don't tr or you just simply accept the way things are? Well, there's really going to be the few things that I highly recommend. One, exercise. I could never say that enough. Exercise is literally one of the most important things that you can do because when you exercise, you literally can't be stressed about things. I don't. I think it's because of the adrenaline and the simple fact that your body is is sending a lot less blood to your brain. So I literally think of the most difficult thing I could possibly think of, something that would make me want to cry, which is mostly my marriage right now, and I run. I run for 30 minutes, usually, sometimes a little more, sometimes less. And during that whole time, I just think. I just think of my feelings. I think of the things I want to do, the things I wish I could fix, the things I wish I could change. Uh, and it's not good to think in the past. That's I wouldn't recommend it. Honestly, it's one of the things I'm trying to cut myself off because the past doesn't. It. it I focus on the past because it's what motivates me to keep changing, right? Because there's things in the past I don't want to go back to, and so having a sight on those things lets me measure the distance to make sure I'm still very far from that. So that's the reason I am ex exempting myself from that particular thing right now. Because that's part of my motivation. Um, Push-ups, sit-ups, gym membership is all great. The more the the more difficult and the more strenuous it is, the better. But um, definitely, if it's not part of your habit already, if you're not already working out, um, or if you've never worked out in your life, or you're kind of overweight or obese or whatever it is, then just start the absolute minimum small. Like for me, jumping jacks. Uh, I did 50 jumping jacks, and then I would do like. 10 push-ups, and then I would do like 20 sit-ups, and after a while, I started getting the rhythm, and then it got easier to just do more, right? Just to gain is always a little bit better than just to drop something cold turkey or to start something cold turkey. I don't know what the opposite of that actually is, because, you know, it's a lot easier to start a habit than it is to end a habit. So when you're doing any of these things that I mentioned, especially working out, the easiest thing to do is to just get up and do it. Like, I would recommend, literally, tomorrow, if you're serious about bettering your life, you wake up and in your in your sleeping wear, if you have to, bolt out that door and start running for a block, even if it's only for five minutes. And you're going to be amazed by how easy it'll be to do to convince yourself the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time, especially if you really are serious about maintaining this. So yeah, every morning, I wake up and I run. And it's usually for about 30 minutes. And then I do some push-ups and set-ups. I take a shower to get the sweat away. And then I feel a lot more refreshed. I don't have to drink another coffee. And it's worth losing the 30 minutes of sleep or 45 minutes of sleep to do all this extra stuff out of my day. Because when you are physically active, you get tired easier when you're going to bed. But you also wake up easier in the morning. 
So you don't require as much sleep. So if, actually, if you're one of those people who sleeps for 10 hours, and you're like, why do I still feel sleepy? It's probably because you're not exercising. And if you are exercising, it's because you're not pushing yourself past your comfort zone. You're not getting to the point where your body is starting to feel tired or aching. You're cutting it just at that point and going, well, this is my habit. This is what I'm done. You want to make yourself a little extenuated. You want to make yourself a little tired, a little sore, because it's what helps build, right? <laughs> so that's what you want to do. Um, second thing um, I would recommend is journaling. Writing down your feelings, having a diary or a journal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's actually one of the things I think is very toxic about masculinity, but used to be one of the things that our forefathers used to do a lot. And it's one of the funny things about how women have their diaries and their journals. And yet a lot of men, especially in like American culture, at least in my experience, oh, that's weird. You know, that's what my, that's what my sister does or my uh, 15 year old daughter does. No, do it. Trust me. When you start writing down thoughts, you have to think about them a lot more than if you just speak them or say them. That's the reason you have scripts for acting, because when you write something down, you have to put a lot more energy into it to make sure it's worded correctly, the grammar structures properly, and then it gives you a reference down to what your ideas were at a, another time. Because we, we think about, what, a couple thousand things every day at the minimum, probably a couple dozens of thoughts per minute, you know, and then they're all alternating like this back and forth. And so if you don't start to write them down or you don't keep them in ink, you don't keep them in a physical substance to remind yourself later, it's going to be too easy for you to lose the will and to lose the progression that you're making, especially when you don't really put it down into stone, so to speak, or paper. Um, the other thing I would say is read more books and use the computer less. So... A big problem right now is a lot of people go on Facebook or they look at memes or they go on the internet to find their news or to get their information from. Now, it's convenient, but it's also wrong with the way that you want to build character and have self-motivation and discipline. Because when you're looking at something on the computer, you can tab switch it and it's gone. And then you don't have to focus on it anymore. But if you're doing it in a book, you can't tab switch. You either keep reading the book or you put it down. Well, if you remove yourself away from the computer and you read it while you're in the car, in the parking lot, when you're uh, at a stoplight, read a... Oh, I maybe mean, that's a bad idea, but you know what, I, what I'm saying. If you're in a taxi or uh, if you're sitting down at the park or you're uh, at a lunch break and you finish your meal in five minutes, go read a little bit and you're going to be surprised. It helps you um, also de-stress and to stop think worrying so much because you can only think about one thing at a time. You can't read and think about the ice box at the exact same time. It has to alternate. The, the problem is multitasking doesn't exist. Men and women always like to think that multitasking exists, but science has proven it doesn't exist. The thing is, is you can alternate between thoughts very quickly, and we're talking about within the milliseconds. So they seem like they're happening at the same time because there's a very, very short time period between the switches, doing this, blah, 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 blah. But again, the true focus can only be on something at once. That's why people that don't multitask and focus on one task inherently dedicated, dedicated into it 100%, complete it a lot faster than someone who's trying to multitask five things at once. So it's just always the wise thing to do, to read, to learn to make your brain to kind of focus on one thing at a time and to gain that little bit of patience and also stress relief. Stress relief is really important so you don't get controlled by your emotions because I was controlled by emotions and I did some really stupid shit. <laughs> and I regret it and so this is what I needed to change actually. That's sadly the, the price I had to pay. And then I would say the other really important thing is... Um, Doing repetitive things. Um, finding the things like doing the dishes, the things you don't really enjoy but don't require a lot of brain power to do because what will happen is that automation will help kind of relax your anxiety and will kind of get away from that attention deficit, just like reading, right? Well, when you're doing something that's really repetitive, it also gives you more time to think, kind of like working out. 
And when you're doing these repetitive things, you can think of something, but you can't think about it so hard that it completely breaks your focus and your spirit and your emotions because there's still the part of your brain that's processing the task at hand, even if it's minimal. So it's a really good time at, at self-discovery and thinking. That's why a lot of people that um, have great inventions, they get their inspiration in the shower. They get the inspiration when they're drinking a cup of coffee or if they're doing the dishes or if they're swiping the floor because it's the exact mode of thought your brain needs to have a break to actually dig in the subconscious and get creative thinking out. So it's very important. Do miscellaneous. Do repetitive. Do mundane shit you don't do you don't like to do and do it frequently because that's exactly actually what you need to do. Um, the other thing is doing the worst things first. So if there's an uh, appointment that you're making with your wife's mother-in-law and you don't like her or you and your wife are having a difficult time in your marriage or your girlfriend or boyfriend, then what you need to do is you need to handle the most stressful things first because it's been psychologically proven that our brains highest impact is on the last thing that we experience in any given situation. So so you remember the exit of that presentation and the last speech and the final wrap-up than you do all the other 20, 30 speeches that were made in that day. You're going to have a recollection of them if they emotionally impact you, but it's the last thing that you hook on the most. And there's a lot of research done with this, like Russell Bronson is... Um, uh, a marketing wizard, but you know he has a, he's met a lot of people that are very intelligent. Dan Airely has a similar take and things like this. Who's a PhD um, psychologist? So yeah, you you want to eat the crust first. You eat your pizza backwards, people. It's not insane. It's actually the right thing to do. <laughs> That's probably why there's a lot of really famous and intellectual people, whether we like them or not, that do weird shit like that because they're training their brain to enjoy the the best things last to get over the mundane and the terrible things first because those are the things that they don't want to have a taste in their mouth when they're walking home after the day's work or when they're spending time with the kid or the wife because what you bring home and what you went go to work with is going to define a lot of your experience and so if you're going there in a bad mood if you're going to the people you love with an expectation that's bad it's going to it's going to become infectious and it's going to poison the thing from from the inside out and then you're going to have more reasons to be stressed and upset, and you're the one who's doing it, you know. Um, the other really good advice that I would probably give people is um, be as repetitive to yourself as possible. So if you have a goal, write it down and read it to yourself day and night. Um, anybody who knows about The Secret or knows about uh, Napoleon Hill or any of the really great um, philosophers knows that um, we're forcing yourself to repetitively intake information over and over and over again uh, will start to ritualize it and therefore your brain will grab onto the idea more and you're going to start expressing this idea without even being consciously aware of it your subconscious will start to drive your actions so if you really want to um, fix something or you have a goal that you really want or there's something that you haven't had the motivation to do yet, but you do it, you put it in a really easy to put spot, right above your bed, right next to your bed, um, on the ceiling, on the kitchen counter, and you write it in really big bold letters, you know, um, read read me, you know, uh, work out in the morning, or um, talk to my wife about her feelings, um, learn to maintain my stress, um, or what you really should do, according to psychology, is I am perfectly healthy, I have have complete control over my mental and physical state. Um, I, I am worthy of the promotion. I am worthy of the love from blah, 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 doing this. And so it's self-assurance and it's motivating. It puts you in a better place mentally and it helps you actually achieve the things much greater because you're attracting it to you, the law of attraction. So, And like I said, there is that spiritual side of it, but there's a the psychological side of why it works because your brain is going to be more indulged in repetitive information, so it's going to look f to express that more frequently because it's what's, what's taking up the majority of your mind and thought processes. So you, I, the, the way that you express yourself, the problem is, is emotions are what give thoughts power, and your brain, right, 
the subconscious part of you doesn't care if it's negative or positive. All it knows is the intensity. So if that means if you're predominantly thinking about negative things, you're therefore are becoming a, a worse negative person. So you have to force yourself to think positively because negative thoughts just come, right? I don't choose to stub my toe. I don't choose to say the wrong thing to a to a to a spouse or a partner or a friend or a family member, but you choose to react to it a certain way, and so your reaction largely has to do with what the predominant thoughts in your head are. So if you're a violent person, if you're a yell, if you're a person that holds grudges, if you're a person that's lazy. It's because that's what you're allowing to infest your mind with, and that's why you have to repetitively re remind yourself that you are changing, right? You can't say, I need to stop being lazy, because that's what you're just going to pay attention to the lazy aspect, and therefore you're giving more power to that statement. So you're not actually changing by enforcing the lazy aspect of the statement. You have to say, um, I am more motivational. I am um healthy right you have to say all the things that you don't have and you have to say them as if you have them so this way your brain is going to start catching on to it and it's going to want to express that so that's one of the great many secrets of life and then last bit of information that's really common meditate um i just saw two books that talked about meditation um the one i know by name is the happiness equation um i don't know the name of the author I have the book over there. Um, my wife got it for me. And um, it actually says that um, according to brain scans and by hormone tests, that people who went through a three and a half minute meditation um, actually had parts of their brain shrink that had to do with stress and their, their um, hormone rates dramatically reduced. So they physically could not feel as stressed as someone who didn't meditate because Meditation is different from faith, um, from sleeping, because meditation is a f choice, right? You're forcing yourself, you're choosing to relax yourself, and so your body is obviously adapting to that lowered state, and so it's trying to release less energy, less hormones, less thoughts, and so it really helps. So meditation, like as the look at look at the monks. Right? <laughs> Look at the Zen monks, man. They, they got their shit put together, and what do they do? They meditate all day. So, hey, it gives you something to think about. Well, I got a lot more in-depth things to talk about, and I don't definitely don't have time in it for this, and I'll be making a series about it, things to particularly focus on. And uh, I'm writing a book, too, about my experiences this past couple of months and my life experiences. Trust me, I got some really dark, interesting shit <laughs> That, you're gonna, that you might really be interested in hearing. And you're probably going to hate me after reading it, but whatever. Hey, controversy, right? So uh, I hope some of you learned something. I know a lot of this is repeated, but I'm telling you it works. You need to commit to at least one of these things. Uh, I would, I'd say all of them. <laughs> all of them, because even I'm doing all of them, and I've only been able to do like this much. You know, it's a small splash of water in an ocean, but it's something, and it's a continued something. As long as you keep doing it, have to. You have to keep doing it. Can't stop for one day. No breaks. All right. I wish all of you guys the best and women. <laughs> and um, I really hope that um, you got something from this. And I hope that you guys have the best day, night, wherever it may be. And I hope you have amazing lives, whether or not you ever watch another video of mine again. Bless all of you. Bye.